I asked five vision language models to tell us time. Only one could actually do this job. This is a classic test to understand how good the vision language models capability is because this is not simply OCR, optical character recognition. Rather, you want to do something more than that. And why is it critical? This is critical because this explains how vision language model could integrate into our daily life. For example, if you were to build a visually challenged assistant application, one of the things that they might want to do is to identify time. So this is kind of a proxy where the models have gotten. This could be a bias in training data. So that is a disclaimer that I want to start with. But in general, if you were to understand a vision language model's quality, there are multiple runs of tests that you can do. And one of the tests that we are trying to do today is give an analog clock or give the picture of an analog clock and then ask the LLM to predict what is the time or at least tell us <laughs> it doesn't have to predict, guess the time. So all I'm going to do is upload the pictures on five different LLMs and ask questions. What is the time? Let's get started. First one that I'm going to ask is Mixtral. Mistral has launched a new model called Pixtral and that is available for us to use on their platform chat.mistral.ai. So I uploaded this clock. Do you do you know the time of this? If you don't know the time of this, let me know in the comment section. Uh, if you are a five year old watching this video, probably you wouldn't know this. But I guess if you're a grown up, you probably would know this. OK, so the answer to this question is five. 55. So this is the time 555 and Pixel says the time shown on the clock is 1005. See, this could be one of the reason um, for the high bias in the training data. If you go to Google images and then you just literally search for clock analog clock. So one of the thing that you would immediately notice is a lot of clock tuned to five or uh, 10, 10 and 10, five. So this could be a D, uh, this could be a bias in the training data that could have like led us to get this understanding. But anyways, uh, the time shown on the clock is 10 five. The hour hand is between 10 and 11, 10 and 11. And uh, the minute hand is pointing at five. The good thing here is that we have only two hands. Imagine you added a third hand, how this model would get confused. Okay, so the next one is we are going to go to the decorated, most decorated LLM, which is chat GPT 4.0. What is the time? And the time on the clock is 1030. Just <laughs> outright. The hour hand is slightly past 10. Uh, okay. Uh, the minute hand is on six, indicating 30 minutes. So it's kind of doing the flipping of it. So 1030. So imagine this is this is the hour hand and this is the minute hand. So it has got its own logic. I think it just could not understand the length of it. So it has got its own logic. If I were to go and then say, are you sure about the lens and ask a follow up question? Uh, most likely it will guess that it might have made a mistake, but let's see if it is. You're right. Um, upon reviewing, <laughs> upon reviewing the clock again, the hour hand does seem to be closer to 11 than it should have been exactly 1030. Okay. It tried to review it, but it did not get it. Cool. That's good for us. So we went to Claude and then we said, okay, what is the time uploading the same picture 555? The time shown on the clock is in the images 1130. How? So it has to give us some detail. How is it? I apologize for the error and the fact that you asked how Claude seemed to have fixed it. So this is exactly the advantage of open AI one. You are not asking how you are not asking it to think or you are not saying, are you sure? But the model itself is doing that thing and then giving you the response back. So in this case, it finally managed to get it not zero shot, but having a follow up question of how made sure that the model actually goes through the individual parameters of how a human being would find time and then it gave an answer. The next one is a model that I am personally attached to for multimodal capability. I know not a lot of you are fans of Google Gemini, but this model, once again, it says half past six and six thirty. And the explanation is the hour hand shorter and thicker hand is pointing directly to six. Once again, um, the minute hand is pointing at 12, which signifies which signifies 30 minutes past. Let's say, are you sure? I've uh, just sent it. Are you sure? And uh, I want to the model to introspect. So you're absolutely right. So it uh, once again gave me a wrong answer. Now the only model that got this in zero shot, like I asked a question, it gave me the right answer back. No thinking through, no are you sure, no follow up is Molmo. 
This is a model that we recently covered. It's an amazing model. I got to know that what the model that they're running on the platform is a 7 billion parameter model. I got a couple of comments saying that this model is not good enough for flow charts and diagrams, which is the case for all the models. Maybe I'll do a separate video just similar to this with flow charts and diagrams. But this model is the only model that managed to get this particular information. This model has a very uh, different kind of an architecture than a typical uh, vision language model. It uses OpenAI Clip as a backend and Quinn 2 7 billion parameter model as the language model. The time shown on the clock is 5.55. The hour and is positioned just before 6, while the minute and is pointing directly at 11, indicating 55 minutes past the hour. I want to just ask the model, are you sure? Okay, just, just in case if the model wants to backtrack. This is a classical question that you can ask kids and most kids would actually backtrack but this model is not backing track, backing, backtracking, backing, backtracking. The configuration is very common and easily recognizable position on an analog clock face. So you have got a, a model that can successfully tell you an analog time without having to have any follow-up question. So if you were to rank this, Molmo comes first. The second one, I would say Claude is the second one because within follow-up, it at least managed to figure out that there, there is some mistake. So thanks to Claude for introspection, but the other models failed terribly. So I don't know if I followed up. Did I follow up? Okay. Um, are you sure? Let's just to be fair and sure. I just said, are you sure? Okay. It is sure. So it said, I'm pretty sure it is 10.05. I'm sorry, Pixel. Pixel. It is not 10.05. It is 5.55. I hope there is something useful for you to take away from this video or at least something fun. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section or if you have got any interesting tests for vision language models because vision language models are going to be the future and we want some innovative, fun way to test these models. See you in another video. Happy prompting.